Hi, today we're going to make this super awesome tracing light box. I used a few new techniques in this one, so it was a very fun build for me, and it came out great. I couldn't ask for any better. So finger joints, I used kind of an inverted miter to hold the plexiglass in, which I thought was really neat, and it makes it flush along the top so your paper can slide around easily. I used 30 watts worth of LED strips for the lighting, and there's a small power supply in here. So lots of fun stuff in this build. If you'd like to see how I did it, stick around. Let's get started. To build the box itself, you're going to need four sides, obviously, and two of those sides, the long sides, are going to be 18 inches by 3 and 3 quarter inches. And the short sides, you're going to have one piece that is 13 by 3 and 3 quarter, and then you're going to have one that's a little bit shorter at 13 inches by 3 and a half inches, and this is the short side that the plexiglass is going to slide into its slot from. In this build I wanted to use finger joints and since I don't have a super gnarly screw advanced box joint jig or something like that I'm just screwing a board to my miter saw, cutting a groove in it, and then I am going to attach another board to this board with clamps so I can have some micro adjustability. This quick and easy method worked out pretty well. The finger joints ended up being a little bit tighter than I think they should have been. I needed quite a bit of clamping pressure to get everything together, but uh, I guess it's definitely not good. The box was designed to accept a quarter inch piece of clear plexiglass and this is cut at 17 and a half inches by 12 inches. And the tricky part is it's got a 45 on three sides and that's what you see me cutting here. And then into three of the sides you need to cut the opposite angle of that 45 degree into the top section of the box. Now if you look at the drawing plans which are available on the website you can see exactly how this is done. It's pretty hard to explain. But what it allows is the plexiglass to sit flush, but yet not bubble or bubble with time. You can see here how the piece of glass slides in and is flush across the entire top, and it actually worked out really well. Cutting out half inch plywood for the bottom of the box, and then another insert to screw down to the bottom of the box to hold all the electrical components. Now to do the wiring for this, I'm running the positive polarity to one side of the board and negative to the other side. And this just makes it a little bit simpler when soldering the LED strips down so you can focus positive on one side and negative on the other and not have to have too much soldering action going on in a small area. Now these LED strips are pretty awesome. You can cut the strips apart every three LEDs. They have a marking on there to guide you accurately. I have a link to these below. I got them from Amazon. You can get them from all sorts of different places. So I just measured the board put the power supply on, and made sure I had adequate length to my LEDs to cover the entire board with proper spacing. Painted the board to get good reflection from the bottom, and stapled the wire down appropriately with clarity on the correct sides that I was after. I'm measuring the spacing for the LED strips so that I have even light all the way across the board, and making some lines so I can use the adhesive on the back of the LED strips to tack it down. Now since this is at a super low voltage, 12 volts DC to be exact, I just twisted the wires together, soldered and covered with electrical tape to make the termination point at the power supply. To make the terminations from the LED strips to the bus bar, I am using 18 gauge copper wire, and this can actually be found in the picture hanging section of your home improvement store. 
laying a bead of solder down on the positive and negative points on the LED strips and soldering this wire to that. Now you want to be careful when you lay these strips down that they're all in the same orientation so that all of the positive points are on the top and all the negative points on the bottom. Sharp-eyed viewers might notice that I had a few flipped over. We just need to be careful. And now I am soldering the copper wire to the bus. I also went back and trimmed those pieces of copper wire and be careful because those go shooting off there like a bullet. I originally wanted a smaller square hole to run the cord through, but I figured you'd never be able to get the extension cord out to replace the power supply, so I drilled this bigger hole, and I end up covering it later. So that you don't see directly through the clear plexiglass, you need to paint one side of the glass so that you have a diffused white light. I used 320 to scratch up the glass and painted it white. A little bit of white on the inside of the box to help reflect and diffuse the light around very evenly. Serafina helped me with some flat black on the outside and this paint covers really, really well. One small countersunk screw on the side that the plexiglass slides out from to hold everything in place. I really didn't like that big hole, so I made a small cover out of quarter inch plywood, painted it black, cut that small hole for the cord, and was good to go. I used a couple zip ties on either side of the cover to hold the cord in place that you can't pull directly on the power supply. Can everybody see all right? Anyway, this was a really fun build. Lots of stuff in here that I really enjoyed doing. The finger joints ended up being a little bit tighter than I think they should have. I needed a lot of clamping pressure to get them together properly, but they're definitely not going anywhere now. I definitely would like to make myself a jig. There's lots of different styles out there, so I may, may buy a plan and use that or come up with something on my own that's a little bit simpler. I don't know how often I'm going to be making finger joints, but it was definitely a lot of fun and I'll probably use the technique again because it's very sturdy. Uh, this was a Christmas present for my little brother. Uh, it's behind us now, so Merry Christmas everybody if I missed you, and I'm sure he's going to love it. I'll definitely be building one of these for my kids someday. Uh, Serafina could probably use it now, but we'll wait a little while. If anyone is interested, there will be a set of plans for this on my website, DIYTyler.com, if you're interested in downloading those and building it yourself. It was fairly simple, lots of fun, and it came out really great. If you're new to the channel, we'd love to have you subscribe so you can see all the great videos that we're going to put out. Please give us a thumbs up, it helps us out a lot. I'm Tyler, I like to do it myself, and we will see you guys next time.